good morning or afternoon, uh, everybody. So uh, I'm going to move on to the specific question that uh, uh, specific signaling question that are in the risk of bias tool for this domain, and then we'll provide you some examples. So um, for the domain five bias in selection of the reported results, you have five main questions. The first question is where the data that produces results analyzed in accordance with the pre-specified analysis plan that was finalized before underlining the outcome data were available for analysis. So here, really the question is, do you have your access to the pre-specified plan? You need to check when this uh, pre-specified analysis plan was produced and make sure that it was not produced after analysis and, and blinding of the data. So your, resp your response here will be yes, probably yes, and that will move toward more low risk of bias. No, probably no, which will move toward uh, more toward uh, high risk of bias, and no information when you don't have access to any pre-specified plan. Then you have to look more specifically and to compare more specifically uh, the pre-specified plan to uh, the results that were actually reported. And the question you need to answer is, is the numerical result being assessed likely to have been selected on the basis of the result from either multiple eligible outcome measurement, for example, you should specific scale, specific definition for an event or specific time point within the outcome domain, or whether the data were specifically selected from multiple eligible analyses. So here again, you're going to answer the question, yes, probably yes, and this will move toward high risk of bias. No, probably no, uh, it means that they were not selected on the basis of the results, and this will move toward low risk of bias, and no information when you're not able to assess uh, this. So when you have access to, to the statistical analysis plan or have access to the data and you're trying to answer the questions, is the numerical results being assessed likely to have been selected on the basis of the results? Your answer will be no, probably no in three main situations. First, all the reported results are consistent with what was planned. And so you're confident that they did not select the results and this will move toward low risk of bias. Or you are in a situation where there is only one possible way in which the outcome domain can be measured and can be analyzed. Time to death, there's no uh, several way to measure uh, time to death. And so you, will, you can be quite confident that there's no uh, selective reporting. Or you have some inconsistency but all the inconsistency are explained because it can happen that uh, the investigator have to change the type of analysis he's going to do, but it provides a clear explanations and you can see that it's not related to the results and they, your answer with, to these questions will be no, probably no, and move toward low risk of bias. On the contrary, when there is clear evidence that the results reported were selected on the basis of the results, so meaning that the investigator or the authors of the report seems to have chosen statistically significant or non-statistically significant because it will move toward his uh, uh, more favorable conclusion in his context, then you will answer yes, probably yes. It's really important to understand that this will depend on the context. So for example, for a trials comparing a new treatment to a placebo, where it seems obvious that the investigator will be more likely to be uh, willing or to be hoping for a statistically significant results for the efficacy outcomes, uh, but they might be more likely to report non-statistically significant results for safety outcomes. So this is how it will um, move from the answer to the signaling questions to the domain judgments, how you're going to evaluate this domain as low 
some concern of high risk of bias. So the only situations where your answer to the evaluation to this domain will be low risk of bias is if you have access to a statistical analysis plan and all the analyses are in accordance with the plan. There's no evidence of selective uh, outcome um, from selective um, reporting from multiple outcome and no evidence of selective reporting from multiple analyses. In these situations, your assessment will be low risk of bias. As soon as you identify some evidence of a selective reporting from multiple outcome or a selective reporting from multiple analyses, your answer is going to be, your assessment is going to be high risk of bias. And all the other situations are going to uh, um, result in an assessment for this domain as some concerns. So uh, for this domain, there is an algorithm that has been developed moving from the answer to the result to the signaling questions to the assessment. And you can see here uh, the algorithm. But you also have access, which is, I find, really useful uh, when evaluating the risk of bias, to an Excel file that is uh, available um, on the website. And you need to download this Excel file to be able to use it. And as you can see, you have all the domain of the risk of bias tool. And if we take the domain five, you can see all the questions. You can answer all the questions. So here, for the first question, I answer no information. You have to provide justifications of your um, answer with quote from uh, the article, for example, called from the statistical analysis plan and when you've answered all the questions you have only to click here and you can see the results of the algorithm so here if you have no information for the first signaling questions no information for the second one but you have evidence that there is a selection from multiple analyses it will result in high risk of bias So if we summarize this, low risk of bias will be pre-specified analysis plan available and eligible outcome and analysis reported according to the plan, irrespective of the results. High risk of bias will be any evidence that the reported outcomes measure or the reported analysis were selected on the basis of the results. And some concerns will be all the different situations where we don't have all the information, which will probably be the most uh, frequent situation. Let's move on to uh, some examples. So this is a randomized control trial evaluating an intradiscal injection of steroid in patients with low back pain. These are the results for the outcome, which is the lumbar pain intensity in the previous 48 hours. And here you can see the mean pain level in both arms. This outcome was assessed at one month, three months, six months, and 12 months. And here you have the mean with 95 confidence interval. So we can see here that from the beginning of the study in the intervention group, we have first important decrease in the pain level but from three months there is an increase in the pain level that becomes to be higher compared to the control group. In the control group you have a decrease in the pain level in the first month but much less than after the injections and then it remains quite stable. So if you look at this slide and try to think what are the different possible ways we could report this result. So take just one, you know, few seconds to think, if I were the investigator of these trials, what would be the different ways to report the results? Well, actually, there are quite a lot of different ways to report the results. You can report and compare the mean level at one month, six months, 12 months. You can also uh, report and analyze the mean change from baseline at one month, the mean change from baseline at six months, and at, at 12 months. 
And you can also choose to dichotomize these outcomes, which is done sometimes because it's more um, understandable for uh, the patients, for the care providers. And you could decide to define a success as a pain level of the less than 40 over 100 on the pain numerous club. But you could choose different threshold. You could have a threshold at 35%, 30%, etc. So you can see here, with this simple example, there are many ways of reporting the results. And if you were the investigator and if you were convinced that the experimental treatment, so the injection of steroid, uh, is beneficial, well, you might be more likely to choose some results than others. And particularly the results that are much more in favor of the experimental treatment are the results at one month. But the results after at six months and 12 months are showing that probably uh, the results are less good in uh, the experimental treatment compared to the control group because the pain level is going to be higher. So now let's say we have to assess uh, uh, the outcomes. You're looking at the registry and by chance uh, the investigator were um, helpful and you have access at the data that are reported in the registry, in the protocol and in the statistical analysis plan. All the data in all the different sources are consistent and the registry were um, the data in the registry were registered before inclusion of the first patient. When you look at the primary outcome that is reported in the registry, it's pain, uh, back pain level assessed on the 11 point numerical scale at one month, with the success being defined as less than 40 uh, on a pain numeric scale at one month. And when you look at the outcome of publications, it's uh, absolutely consistent. So it's also, so, so it's a bit more specific because it's a percentage of patients with low back pain intensity of less than 40 in the pre previous 48 hours at one month. So it's the same time point, it's the same threshold, and here you understand that it's probably um, a dichotomous outcomes. So for these situations, you can assess it as low risk of bias because the analysis is according in is performed in accordance with the pre-specified one. But if you had in the registry an outcome reported as such, pain level, back pain level assessed on an 11-point scale at 12 months. So first, you can consider that this is not sufficiently precise. We don't know whether it's going to be a comparison of mean or a comparison of evolutions of, of the mean over time. But still, we know that the time point is at 12 months. And uh, knowing that the time point is at 12 months, and knowing that in the paper, people report a time point at one month, you can assess, and that at one month, the results are in favor of the experimental treatment while at 12 months the results are in favor of the comparator, you could uh, assess this uh, outcome as high risk of bias because the numerical results assessed are likely to have been selected on the basis on the results. Another example from a COVID example, because there's lots of systematic review and we're conducting systematic review on COVID trial. Um, so that's a paper published in the Lancet for which we have access to the protocol, to the statistical analysis plan, to the registry that was prospectively uh, registered. We have the date of the statistical analysis plan that seems to be done before um, the end, uh, um, before um, unblinding of the, of the um, analysis and all the resources are consistent. The outcome of interest in your systematic review, so the pre-specified outcome that you planned in your systematic review, oh, sorry, are mortality at day 28 and time to discharge from a hospital. When you look 
at, and these are the outcomes that are also reported in the results. When you look at your statistical analysis plan, you can see that outcomes were planned to be assessed at day 28, and that mortality of all cause, as well as time to discharge, were uh, outcomes that were actually planned to be evaluated. So you will be quite confident to assess this study as low risk of bias if all these results are reported. And other example, again, in the field of COVID, your outcome of interest here are time to clinical improvement, time to viral negative conversions, and incidence of clinical improvement. So that the outcomes you pre-specified in your analysis, and that the outcome that are actually in this context uh, reported in this paper. You're going to see for source what were the analysis plan, you don't have access to the protocol, you don't have access to the statistical analysis plan, but you have access to the registry entry. And when you compare the analysis plan and the analysis reported, you can see that for all your outcome of interest, the outcome planned in your systematic review, they are completely reported both in the registry and consistently reported in the publication. However, when you look more precisely at the registration, you find that the registration was not done prospectively and that the registration was actually done after the end of the recruitment of all the patients. And so you don't have any access to information of what were actually the pre-specified plan. And so in this situation, your assessment would be some concern. 